We are also thinking very seriously about academic gaps, uh, how to diagnose them and support them, because we do anticipate that um, the, um, our normal work in public education to try to, uh, to resolve uh, and ameliorate achievement gaps is only being exacerbated in the, in the current context. And um, when you remove the uh, end of year state assessment, um, while there's uh, you know, generally a lot of hot sports opinions on that, what that really means is you are removing a huge amount of diagnosis um, on uh, student educational readiness. Ensure that we have good educational diagnostic uh, approaches uh, that, are, that are ready to be stood up and support um, uh, educators so they can find out exactly what the kids know and can do, and what they have not yet mastered, so that they can intervene and remediate uh, accordingly uh, when we resume resume our normal um, uh, educational posture. The, the other thing, as you mentioned, is just time. The, how can we redesign the curricular experience next year? So maybe the first six weeks is an intensive effort to shore up any gaps uh, to, to get the, the last portion of the school year compressed um, in, um, and, and, uh, and get as many kids to mastery on those concepts as possible. We're, you know, we're gonna have kids that are rising to fourth grade this year, or next year that um, may not um, really have demonstrated the kind of proficiency they need even in third grade uh, content. So, um, you know, uh, trying to help uh, and, and ensure that we're prepared to kind of um, reorient the curricular systems for the next school year, even expanding time um, that, is, uh, that is made available. These are things that we're talking to key district leaders around the state with. We're, sort of uh, wrestling with that um, uh, internally in terms of what tools we'll have at our disposal um, to help districts um, really address that, that compelling educational need. Mm -hmm.